Right, we're here at the uh, Nar Bike Park up in Cumbria. They've been very kind to host us for uh, this video and demo with uh, Michael Bonney and uh, Pat Campbell Jenner from Identity to talk about the uh, new. Sorry, to talk about the metal. Well, what is the metal? What is the Identity metal? Uh, where did it come from? What's I mean, Identity traditionally sort of a dirt jump, uh, you know, four cross brand. Uh, so it had been quiet for quite a while before you brought this bike back. Yeah. Well, the, the metal is basically our take on an enduro bike, having fun on. It's the bike, the kind of bike that we're all riding now at Identity. We, we just didn't have an option for ourselves that we wanted. Basically, we wanted to design a bike that filled a slot that we wanna we wanna ride. Just having fun, just enjoying hitting jumps, corners, tracks and racing on ultimately as well. Um, it's 160mm travel. Um, pretty current in terms of, well, actually I'd say progressive in terms of geometry, the way it feels, so it's quite long for its respective size. Yeah, when you say respective size, that was that was a, a neat trick you pulled, basically. You, you were one of the first people to kind of almost make sense of sizing. Whereas yeah. you made your mediums longer, I mean, effectively, you made your mediums large because a lot of people who would normally ride a medium were going to a large frame. Which I think is silly. There's, and people are also a bit scared of riding a small because it's small. There's nothing wrong with that. Small bikes look better. They're cooler, in my opinion. So the small is long. I'm five foot nine. I ride a small. 440 reach on a small. 462 on a medium and 485 on a large. Like, they're big. Yeah, but also because you've made that change, it means things like you get drop of seat posts that fit, even if you want to go for a longer one. That is true, yeah. We did make sure um, the seat tubes had the uh, insertion depths, that so you could slam a drop of post in there that's long and not have any interference in the frame with the bends or curves or anything like that. So it's you can run... We stock 150s on the bikes, but you can run longer with no issues um, and still have good standover and the right height for pedaling basically yeah because as a distributor you felt that by kind of building this bike yourself rather than getting it from a third party you could have more influence about what you were doing with the bike is that correct oh right yeah I mean nothing's perfect um, and for us having some control over the product that we're selling is a really good thing and a good position to be in um, we noticed there's a gap in the, there was a gap in the market for the brand it hadn't done a lot in a while it had been quiet um but my past is in dirt jumping <laughs> and uh, that's the dog for the viewers yeah thanks Tilly <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah it's the bikes we're riding as a brand we grew up dirt jumping we have since grown up got old and don't want to get so hurt we still hurt ourselves riding these bikes but yeah they just wanted to go out and have fun doing a longer ride I think one of the things you see is that there's a lot of smaller brands now do the, 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 there's a lot of choice out there for riders and what we were trying to do was just find something that suited us it won't suit everyone we accept that and the, the point really is just about finding another niche of it. And it's a pretty wide marketplace now yeah and it's <laughs> people there's there's options out there for people for everything this bike we feel sits in a particular area of just hard hitting good fun confidence inspiring it's not going to let you down <laughs> Go on, it off. yeah i mean i think that's one of the real strengths of that bike i mean i had one of these as a long termer for a full year on uh, the magazine i work on and i, I never touched it Absolutely never touched it. I put a chain slap protector on the chain stay, set the sag roughly right, and, you know, I did regular checks on all the bolts and all the other sections, but nothing ever needed touching on it. And I think, you know, it's not the lightest bike in its category, but it is an absolute workhorse, I think. And But that's always been the kind of identity ethos and the identity ethic. Yeah. It was always the bike that was going to be waiting for you when you came back from an A&E. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. And we did some pretty simple what we felt were logical things anyway like all the hardware on it's a 5mm allen key so you're out on the trail you haven't got 
rummage around for every single tool under the sun just to do anything up. Uh, all the bearings are the same, so there's eight of the same bearing. Yeah, they're a bit bigger, they're a bit heavier, but I've had mine frame almost a year. It's done a week in France. It gets jet washed, and it's still... I'm on the same bearings. It's still absolutely fine. Um, and it's threaded BB, isn't it? Yeah, because it works. <laughs> yeah, but you were one of the first people, I think, in production with a metric shock. Yeah, and so we like you're saying, you weren't it. just progressive with geometry. I mean, not only uh, did you get the metric shock in there early, but also you made the decision to get, have a kinematic that worked with air and coil um, fairly well. Or I'd say it does work with coil. Mine, I've got mine set up coil. Um, we're evaluating it. We'll see what happens, but it, that's tricky for us as a smaller brand to be able to offer with the options we have OEM on shocks. Yeah. Because we have to buy shocks with springs and it becomes tricky when you've got different rider weights. I'm quite heavy, or I'm on a small bike, there might be a really light guy on a large bike. You don't know what spring they're gonna need. But you're right, the metric shock, the frame was designed around it from the ground up from the very start, rather than being just brought out and then bodged or fiddled with to make it work yeah I mean you paddle that into the kind of the development wave at just the right moment where boost was definitely going to be an established standard well the sample the original prototype was um, 142 and that changed on production which is a decision that we were kind of we had to do really we can't afford to make another rear triangle just to push it wider Um, it's just a case of you've got to follow along boost seems to be here to stay now it's out in the market <laughs> um, but the metric thing came about really through you didn't it yeah just it the was contact the contacts when, when I joined identity I looked at some of the kinematics and I just wasn't happy with the graphs I was seeing so approached a few friends in the suspension industry one of whom had just left Cape Creek and was in between jobs and Josh pointed us in the direction of the metric shop said this, this is what's coming this is what I would work around but then give us a lot of help understanding the kinematics the amount of progression needed uh, and just how to get the bike working with that new shop which really was fortunate but, uh, but I think it really helped build a very good bike just that little bit of insight from somebody so knowledge yeah because you are a small team and essentially we're looking at the identity development team here. Pretty much. But <laughs> the depth of experience that you, Michael, have in the industry is about as fathomless as you get. And Pat, you've got a huge amount of experience of practical riding at, yeah. a, at a really high level and a really yeah. demanding level. Yeah, I mean, I know what I want from a bike on a racing side and also on a just going out for a ride. Like, yeah, I ride a small if I was racing, I might ride a medium. <laughs> I might ride a medium. I can I can jump between both, which is quite nice. But yeah, we it, bike, riding bikes is fun. The bike's not fun to ride. Tell it. I think the other thing is it's a good combination of my experience as well, the production, development yeah. side, and counterbalances Pat's enthusiasm for riding, um, and that because of that, Pat's got far more attention to detail than I have. Things like the five millimeter Allen key all around that comes from his astounding knowledge of what he wanted, and but actually taking that and getting it manufactured at a quality manufacturer, making sure the frame's going to do what we want to do. It's going to last. It's going to be reliable. That's where certain of my skills come in, and I think the combination of those two things works well. Yeah. So. I mean, the inevitable question at this point, you've got a bike that has been really well, really, really well received right across the board in terms of yep. reviews and, I think, rider feedback and hopefully sales as well. You know, what, what's next? What's we've happening got, next? How much new, do you want to give away here? We've got the new AK, which is the new frail hardtail, which is based on a similar principle. That's the, your slack 140mm travel hardtail but it's got a little bit of a party piece because we've got an adjustable dropout on it we can put in a 29er in it by pulling the dropouts back you can fit a 29 2.3 or a 27.5 2.6 in it um, you run a 120 fork in the 29 and you get 
pretty similar geometry to the 140 bike, so you can kind of get two bikes out of one, which is really cool. Um, the BB drops quite high on it, or quite low, should I say? It's a high number, 50 mil below the axles, so it's pretty low. Yeah. You can really drop drop your weight into the bike, and it just rails. It's like riding this. It's quite encouraging in a fun and scary way at times. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, again, it's, it's a more of a gravity focused bike than a. Um, well, no, it's still pedals. It's still good. Yeah. I mean, the hard pedal, obviously. Pedal. Yeah. I mean, it's. But we did all the geometry on it at SAG. Went, right. What do we want at SAG? And then worked back. So yeah. it's all designed around 25% SAG. And then back up to um, where it is static. So actually, on the ground, it's slacker than this is by half a degree at the head angle. But when you're riding it. Yeah, because the way of a hardtail sags compared to a full sort Yeah, so the, the seat angle runs a bit steeper and the head angle gets a bit steeper, but actually on the trail they give you really good numbers. So um, and that one's slightly different because the seat angle's half a degree steeper on the large, just to yeah. keep the ride away a bit more, yeah. a bit further forward. Beyond that, uh, there's a new Dr. Jekyll, so the original model for identity is back, a new dirt jump bike, which is cool. A lot of interest in that, which is Exciting. And because you dominated that market with that bike back back in the glory days of carpets on ramps <laughs> yeah. down the woods, definitely when every local wood had a jump park, you know. And since we showed that bike last September at NEC show, the amount of interest that comes through on social media because that comes to me, comes to me um, is amazing. Really, through the website on social media, anytime I tease anything with the AKA or the Dr Jekyll, it's 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 just really nice to see that there's a, a greater demand for the brand beyond just the metal. Yeah. Um, beyond that, there's other things playing along, but they're going to be a little way out. One of the things we have done now is we've been in a position where we could bring our own designer into the team as well. So we've got Brian working with us now, who's capable of sort of taking us on more with the full suspension design as well. And I think that's going to be certainly for the two of us to have Ryan on board how quickly we can move forward now in house just desk to desk really yeah. that can make a big difference to what we can achieve yeah so we've got Ryan in, in the office with me and um, we just communicate the whole time me and, Mark, me and Michael on Skype and Ryan as well just throwing ideas out do we need to do this should we try that what about that have you thought about this it's quite dynamic. Yeah, and it's a nice, it's, it's a nice closed design circuit as well. You're not, yeah, you know, it's not a massive lead time on every answer and every projection, which I guess is, you know, how you got a very contemporary bike out. Yeah, you know, right in the sweet spot of time. Yeah, and it's like you say, it's everybody that's ridden it has loved it. There's been zero complaints about it, which is amazing and good to see. Um, makes us happy that everybody likes it because we do, obviously. And See them out on the trails always nice. Yeah. Just I think the design process also, for the design development, and in the manufacture it took us probably a bit longer than I would have liked. But in doing so it meant that the bike was current and we could adopt things as we went along. And I think it's the same going forward. We showed the UK and Dr. Jekyll last September. September, I see. It's probably going to take us another few months before we actually get the production. Just as we refine things, we're not fixed to marketing cycles. As yeah, there's no year things. cycle. We're sort of just working at our speed, making sure things are right. Reliability, performance, they're, they're the important things for us. Rather get the product right than just rush the market because it's the 1st of May. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of riders and a lot of buyers who'd certainly thank you for that. Well, Certainly the ones who are going to use the product hard and use it for a long time. Well, and that's the thing as well, like the whole model year thing is a bit of a farce, really, with why should my bike be out of date because the colour's changed. Change it when it needs changing. This doesn't, it's current at all. Like, this absolutely rips. It'll ride beyond me and I've considered myself OK on a bike. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Not that it, not that it will ride beyond you, but yeah, <laughs> I'll be following. I'll, I'll be following Pat down the trails later, and uh, I think you'll uh, realise that yeah, Pat's a damn handy rider. So probably uh, make sure you watch the uh, Identity Metal. Make sure you watch the Identity Metal uh, live ride review. 
it'll be posted probably as a separate video now, otherwise it's going to get really long. And uh, massive thanks for your time, guys. And uh, thank you, guys. Let's go jump on the bike. Yeah. Cheers, lads. Sweet.